Well, non-target embolization is indeed something that we have to uh, deal with basically every day in our practice. Most of the times, fortunately, non-target embolization is asymptomatic and we don't really realize that something has happened. So it is said today that it's a, an underdiagnosed problem. However, when it's clinically evident, then it may become a real challenge. Just think about, for instance, a bronchial artery embolization. One of the most fearful complications is paraplegia due to inadvertent embolization of the Adam Kevitz artery, for instance, because it's something that it's difficult to identify. Uh, also in the liver, there are numerous publications that report on necrotizing pancreatitis, even leading to death, cholecystitis, liver or skin necrosis, and so on. So it's an important, so it's something that we need to keep in mind every time that we work with embolics. Well, for sure, the first point is to clearly uh, understand the vascular anatomy in the district that you're dealing with. You need to identify all the vessels that could be non-target vessels in the area of the treatment. You need to carefully evaluate for the presence of arteriovenous shunts. Uh, you need to position your catheter uh, properly in order to uh, avoid non-targets. And uh, once you have understood your anatomy, and place your catheter, then also you need to choose the most proper embolic, which is an important part. Finally, every time you need to carefully check under fluoroscopy your injection, uh, possibly using also sufficient contrast media in order to clearly depict where your embolics are going. Then sometimes all of this is not enough. And fortunately, right now, some industries are proposing new microcatheters that somehow, in different ways, um, are able to reduce the risk of reflux. One of these catheters, for instance, is, has just been recently approved by CE, so it has just received the CE mark. And it's a particular catheter because it has some side holes at the tip. The principle is that from these side holes, only the liquids are going to exit, like particularly contrast or diluted contrast. And this liquid creates a vortex, and the vortex creates a sort of fluid barrier that interferes with the particle's reflux. Uh, it's quite interesting, the principle, because this catheter is essentially a normal microcatheter, apart from the side holes. Uh, so basically, any interventional radiologist can use it. It does not really require the learning curve. It does not have anything that you need to activate before the injection. So basically, you navigate everywhere, and it can be used in any district, potentially. It's obviously, it's something under investigation. We need to understand exactly if and how the flow dynamics can change with this catheter. But as for now, at least in preclinical studies and in some initial preliminary clinical experiences, it seems to work quite well.